From the Fokker Planck equation, that is the Klein Kramers equation, we can determine the evolution of the probabilities of Brownian particles under any situation, including external forces in time and in space as well as in velocity. For that, sometimes it is quite useful to carry out some non dimensionalization of the space, time and velocity variables from within the existing parameters. As you can see, we derived this following equation in the previous lecture dw by dt plus v the velocity dw by dx plus the external force dw by dv equal to gamma by 2 d2w by dv square plus beta d by dv of vw. We in fact can combine these two in, uh, by taking the d by dv out, but here we write explicitly. So, specifically let us say f x equal to 0, no external force, it is a free particle. Not, it is not necessary to do that, but this is just as an illustration. Then the equation takes the form d w by d t plus v d w by d x equal to gamma by 2 d 2 w by d v square plus beta d by d v of v w. This is a second order equation both in, in velocity and a first order in space somewhat interesting because if you go back to the Fokker Planck equation that was second order in space and that second order term accounted for diffusion. Here the second order is in velocity and the, therefore the, it is basically referring to diffusion in velocity space that is what Brownian motion is. That diffusion in velocity space is going to introduce randomness in x space via a first order coupling. So, mathematically it is somewhat not so obvious how one gets a Fokker Planck equation for example from this and it is a bit of an advanced uh, kind of an exercise to perform that, but right now we work with how we can make this equation look simpler. So, for that we note that when we have put force equal to 0, we have basically two parameters gamma and beta and they are not all unrelated and we have this thing to note that beta is basically k t by f as we said beta is uh, sorry beta is f by m and gamma equal to 2 beta k t by m where m is the mass of the particle k t is the temperature f is the friction coefficient etc. Beta has a dimension of reciprocal time and hence 1 by beta provides a natural time scale for the system. So, we define natural time length and velocity scales. That is the way we always non dimensionalize. First, we should look for what are the natural scales. One thing is obvious that the tau relaxation or the characteristic time let us say T c, c always represents the characteristic scale that can be 1 by beta. The, for the velocity v, it is a characteristic velocity is the thermal velocity, it is always root k t by m that provides the natural velocity. Now, the once we have a characteristic time and a characteristic velocity, we can generate a characteristic length. Hence, the characteristic length L c that is going to be it is a product of velocity into time v c t c meter per second and per second. So, it is automatically generated. So, with that we can scale these are characteristic scales.
with that we can generate for example, the term gamma can now be expressed because it is 2 beta k t by m which is going to be v c square by t c. And now we define dimensionless quantities variables normally we write it as x star right. So, you can say for example, velocity let us start with the velocity first velocity the dimensionless velocity is true velocity divided by the characteristic velocity, but somehow to avoid tediousness in writing we do not use a star, but let us say I decide we use u when we say u which means it is dimensionless velocity v. Similarly, now we define a dimensionless length you can call it x star which is x divided by characteristic length which we already defined, but again for ease of writing I call it as xi. Similarly, t star the characteristic time um, the um, scaled time dimensionless time is a true time divided by the characteristic time scale again for ease of writing I call it as tau. So, these are dimensionless variables of the problem. If we substitute these things, so if we substitute these characteristic times eliminate beta v x t gamma by 2 exactly in terms of all these variables all the hanging parameters cancel out. The entire equation is an exercise that you should do to get the feeling the entire equation takes a form free of any parameter it becomes then easy to remember in the dimensionless u the probability density expressed in terms of these quantities instead of x we said it is going to be xi which is the dimensionless length scale that becomes d 2 w by d u square plus d w d by d w of u w. It is a very elegant looking one dimensional equation for free particle you know this cannot be done very um, uh, generally or universally when there is a force field. If you know the force field its dependence on x again of course, the same scalings you can introduce and you can write down, but it may also have its own length scales. So, there will be new length scales will develop. So, that is a matter of detail which we do not take up now. So, this is non dimensionalized KKE. non dimensional Klein Kramer equation specifically for f x equal to 0. It has no hanging parameters now everything is in non dimensional uh, form. For a free particle we, we should specify the domains our xi domain could be the real physical space domain, the velocity domain of course, it will be again minus infinity to infinity and of course, the time is always positive. So, these are also an additional thing with that we can note. Being a second order in space as uh, being a second order in velocity we one may wonder that we may need boundary conditions two boundary conditions on velocity, but by virtue of the fact that velocity the domain of velocity includes infinity and generally in most problems velocity cannot be controlled from outside its domain cannot be regulated and then the velocity at large values uh, cannot occur very frequently and they should decay down. Hence, w will be assumed to tend to 0 
when velocity tends to either plus infinity or minus infinity. So, a natural this equation therefore, has a natural boundary condition in the velocity space. All that one might have to provide are the initial conditions or the boundary conditions in the position and time space. Let us develop some simple solutions. Most of the solutions we have attained in some way, we have obtained in our exercises earlier, but this is basically a reassertion of the same via the klein kramers equation. So, let us consider case 1 solutions, some solutions to klein kramers equation. Let us consider case 1 equilibrium solution. So, when we say a system is in equilibrium there should be no flux of any type and there should be no change in time and hence equilibrium by definition means d by d t or for that matter d by d tau in our new variable this should be 0. Similarly, there should be no space change which basically implies that d by d psi should be 0. So, when we do that our equation becomes very simple, it becomes d by d u of d w by d u plus u w equal to 0. So, first integral can be easily executed. So, that leads us d w by d u plus u w equal to some constant let us say k. Now, what is the how do you determine this constant? Here we invoke the fact that I just mentioned that the domain of velocity includes minus infinity and plus infinity and since this is supposed to be constant across all velocities. The, if you determine the value at one velocity that should be sufficient and we know that when velocity is infinity, when u tends to plus minus infinity both w and dw by du should tend to 0 and in fact w should tend to 0 much faster than any power when that is required because we need to have moments of w that is why. So, in other words even u w will go to 0. Once we invoke this condition it implies hence k has to be 0. So, this brings us to the next level of simplicity one has this equation d w by d y d u u w equal to 0 the first order equation I simply write the solution w equal to w u now we can call it as w infinity maybe we'll subscript w infinity u some constant e to the power minus u square by 2 the non dimensional way. And let us recall u was a non dimensional expression for the true velocity in terms of the characteristic velocity and characteristic velocity was root k t by m, where v c was root k t by m. Hence, w infinity in terms of the true velocity will be some constant a e to the power minus m v square by 2 k b t. It is always put a k b for the Boltzmann constant because not to confuse with many k's we use. So, this basically means now a will be determined a determined by normalization of the probability by integral w infinity d v should be 1 which of course, will give you um, an expression in terms of k t and m. So, with that we can so that that leads us to w infinity v 
after you do that basically will be root of square root of m by 2 pi k b t e to the power minus m b square by 2 k b t where t is the temperature. So, this equation there is nothing new in this this only guarantees that the equation we derived is consistent with the physics that we started because this is the well known Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Boltzmann and also is consistent with the principle of equipartition of energy etcetera. It will reproduce all the results that we had used from basic equilibrium principles in obtaining the uh, second moments etcetera of the Langevin dynamics. Let us however, go a little further let us take to a now a little more complicated problem that is where now particle starts with an initial velocity. It is not an equilibrium solution, it is a non equilibrium situation with an initial velocity v naught or in the u space u naught, but it is homogeneous in space. You can imagine a situation that particles are distributed homogeneous in space, but all of them have a particular velocity that is we continue to hold that d by d x is 0, but w therefore, it is a function of v at a time 0 is delta let us say we are working with the u variable. So, we can straight away write it for u variable as that u minus u naught particles is projected at some velocity u naught, but homogeneous in space. So, the equation now is the same equation, but it does have time dependence d w by d tau has the right hand side d by d u of u w with the initial condition that w u at tau equal to 0 is delta u minus u naught. This equation looks similar to the Fokker Planck equation in position space or what we call as diffusion equation, but it is not so mainly because of this term. This adds a certain level of complexity and it is definitely of theoretical interest. Uh, to develop skills to solve this kind of linear equations. It has been already done, but just to illustrate how such things are done, we quickly go through uh, the method of Fourier transforms, which is very useful. So, as usual, apply Fourier transform, simply call it as F t. So, by definition we know that there is a conjugate variable for velocity. For velocity we do the Fourier transforming time remains the same. So, velocity goes over and by definition it is integrated in over u and conjugate to u is going to be k and my distribution function becomes transformed to so 1 with a caret now. So, with this definition the thing that we we are familiar is that the Fourier transform of the second order term is well known. We have seen that Fourier transform of the second derivative it is going from u to k that is what we are going to do. This Fourier transform is simply minus k square Fourier transform of the density itself which is a function of k and this is known. So, the question or some exercise that one has to do is what is the Fourier transform of the second term that is d 
d by du of uw. So, this term requires some exercise. For that, we note that this is basically minus infinity to infinity by definition i k u then d by d u of u w integrated over all u. Do an integrating factor method integrate this and also uh, integrate the second term and differentiate this term. Then apply the limits for the first part and those limits will disappear because uh, limits will lead to the function to go to 0 and then one is left for left with only the second term which is minus of when you differentiate you are going to get i k here and then the integral will be e to the power i k u and this integral is going to be u w d u. So, this part is quite fine, but how do I do this? Because it is not just w it is u w for that. So, to do that we note that if we differentiate the definition since w caret is given as integral e to the power i k u w d u if I differentiate with respect to k I am allowed to do because it is a function of k then I will have by d k for example then u will come here and i will come out. So, it is going to be e to the power i k u u w d u which is i which is the Fourier transform of i into f t of u w which is what we want to this is f t of u w. So, f t of u w is the minus i d w by d k and when we put all of them together in the Fokker Planck equation we get a nice looking first order equation. So, okay, so let me let us complete this exercise hence we have f t of hence f t of d by d u of u w is going to be minus i k and this will be 1 by i. So, i square is minus and then there will be a minus so eventually will be minus k d w by d k. So, when we combine all that we obtain in the transformed space a first order equation that is the beauty of Fourier transforms it is going to be minus k square w cap minus k d w by d k or I can take this to the LHS write d w by d tau plus k d w by d k equal to minus k square w. So, it is the partial differential equation now it has become first order partial differential equation from the second order. So, there is an advantage. This first order equations are generally solved by the method of characteristics and uh, well to do that we need some initial condition and in view of the fact that we have this initial condition we can apply it over to the transformed variable which is nothing but integral e to the power i k u delta u minus u naught d u which is e to the power i k u naught. So, we have this system now which is completely determined to which we have to find a solution. For that we use method of characteristics or a new variable we will find out or transformations there are many ways the first order the simplest way is to go to a new set of transformations say new variables in from the old variables k and tau were the old variables we go to new variables eta and tau prime so if we choose this eta is this and of course, the tau prime let us say is the same as tau, but just because it is a new coordinate system we put a prime to it with this this is the new 
variables. Then if you do a transformation for example, then use things like this, uh, we need d by d tau. So, d by d tau is going to be d by d tau prime d tau prime by d tau plus d in terms of the new variables it is d by d eta d eta by d tau etcetera. Similarly, d by d e d by d k is going to be d by d tau prime d tau prime by d k partial plus d by d eta d eta by d k. And one thing we notice this is 0 and this is 1 and this of course can be easily expressed by differentiating eta with respect to tau which is going to be k e to the power minus tau itself and uh, yeah, minus sign will come. So, it will be minus eta, this will become minus eta, this whole thing. So, likewise we can, uh, we need d eta by d k and d eta by d k is simply e to the power minus tau prime. This will be e to the power minus tau or tau prime. So, when we put all these transformations, the equation actually cancels, many terms cancel, one gets a very simple equation dw by d tau prime. Now, in terms of this variable, simply minus of eta square e to the power 2 tau prime w cap in terms of eta tau variables. So, we can integrate this noting that this is a function of eta and tau and it is a, is a partial derivative. So, when we integrate this, we will get w eta tau prime is going to be some unknown function, it can be a function of eta, you can easily verify and it will be minus eta square by 2 e to the power 2 tau prime or go back to the original variables, go back to k tau and then this attains the form w caret k tau will be the unknown function c will be a function of k e to the power minus tau e to the power minus k square by 2. Here c is unknown function. Now, the unknown function we determined by the initial condition since we know that since w cap k 0 is e to the power i k u naught by putting tau equal to 0 we simply obtain c k therefore is going to be e to the power i k u naught plus k square by 2 or c k e to the power minus tau which is what we want is going to be e to the power i u naught k e to the power minus tau plus k square by 2 e to the power minus 2 tau with all that. So, finally, our solution therefore is going to be k tau equal to e to the power i u naught k e to the power minus tau minus minus k square by 2 into 1 minus e to the power minus 2 tau. Now, formally the solution is obtained in the k tau space we have to do inversion from k to real velocity u. 
So, since it is a Gaussian integral inversion we know and we leave it to that. So, when we do that final inversion we get the probability density distribution W u tau equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi into 1 minus e to the power minus 2 tau e to the power minus of u minus u naught e to the power minus tau whole square divided by twice of 1 minus e to the power minus 2 tau. So, this is a Gaussian, but with the shifted mean and if we carefully see the mean is actually the one we had already obtained u naught e to the power minus tau and this is the variance which we had seen as 1 minus e to the power minus 2 tau by actually by actually uh, working with the Langevin equation. But this gives you the confirms that the equation that we developed is consistent with the Gaussian approximation that we carried out and if one has to plot initially we had a delta function like this particularly that had some velocity at a tau equal to 0, some velocity u naught, but before it attains equilibrium it becomes quite broad and the peak shifts with the time at any time to tau this is at any time tau peak shifts to a value e naught e to the power minus tau and the standard deviation here which is becomes square root of 1 minus e to the power minus 2 tau. So, this is the essence of the free particle prob solution to the free particle problem from the plain Kramers equation. One can actually increase the level of complexity. This has been done long ago and it is very well known and the classic book of S. Chandrasekhar reviews of modern physics in 1943 gives variety of solutions. Solutions for a projectile for example, where we do not assume that it is distributed uniformly in space, particle is localized in velocity as well as in position. Solution is of course, apparently possible same double Fourier transform one has to use both for velocity as well as for position. You will get a very complicated multi Gaussian bivariate uh, Gaussian distribution you will get and that has been done. One can further leave work with greater complexities of, of particles having some force field, especially harmonic forces. So, it is Brownian motion of bound particles all that can be done via uh, the Klein Kramers equation. The Klein Kramers equation's great advantage is it enables us to understand how particles surmount barriers, why chemical reactions take place and many many other aspects. All this is relatively more advanced subject and we relegate all this to future. For now, more or less we have examined ourselves starting from random walk model to Fokker-Planck equation model to klein Kramers model, the kind of stochastic phenomena that a real physical systems encounter and how they can be described. Thank you.